Hello, Internet. My name is Quinn, and this is Blondie Hacks. This is Lathe Skills number eight, Concentricity. This is a series of quick videos on getting started in machining. If you like my content, please do subscribe both here and on Patreon. On Patreon, I post exclusive project videos and 3D models and engineering drawings. Lots of cool stuff just for patrons. Okay, let's dive in. Concentricity refers to the outer surface of the material all, always being the same distance away from the center axis of that material. That's of course a, a, the, the geometric property that makes a circle a circle. Uh, but some, and something like this may look round, but in fact because this outer surface is unmachined, it won't be concentric to the center axis of this material, to any particular axis in fact. Whereas once we've machined something, the machine tool has defined a center axis based on the spindle bearings and we've created an outer surface that we do know is concentric to that center axis. Concentricity matters for something like a spinning shaft, of course, because you want the mass evenly distributed around the axis that that shaft is spinning on so that it doesn't vibrate or rattle or anything like that. So wheels, gears, anything that spins, of course, you want concentricity. But it matters in a lot of places that you might not expect. For example, this little uh, wobbler steam engine here, uh, this mechanism relies on the piston and the cylinder axis being in line with the center axis of the crankshaft. Uh, so imagine if this piston had been made uh, in a way that wasn't uh, very concentric with the cylinder. Uh, once this shaft here spins over, the cylinder shifts over. Now if this concentricity between the piston and the cylinder wasn't maintained, this distance here between the small end of the piston and the center axis of the crankshaft would be incorrect. And what would happen is the crankshaft would be pushing this crank pin too far over or too far in from where it wants to slide and this mechanism is going to bind up. So the point is that concentricity matters in a lot of areas that you might not expect. So especially when you're learning, uh, just concentrate on keeping it because it might matter in ways that you don't know, yet know about. Now let's say I've just turned this part in the three jaw chuck here. Uh, as I've shown in the turning video, you've now acquired concentricity on that part, even if your system here uh, has some runout in it, which every system does. So as you can see on the indicator, uh, we have virtually zero total indicated runout, so we've uh, acquired concentricity by turning this part. Now the question is, uh, how do we keep concentricity as we do subsequent operations uh, on this? So let's say I want to do another operation on this part, so I take it out of my chuck and I naively put it back in. Everything seems fine. As you can see, we've now acquired four or five thousandths of runout. So we've lost concentricity in this part just by removing it from the chuck. So what happened there? Well, our culprit is this guy right here. This is the three jaw self-centering scroll chuck. And what that means is that when I turn any one of these uh, keys, all three jaws move together. And uh, there's a, a big scroll in here and all these jaws are keyed into it. So when that scroll spins, all the jaws move in or all the jaws move out. Now that mechanism is very convenient and it makes for very quick setups in the lathe. Uh, and these chucks can be very precise. In fact, even in an expensive one like this is actually very precise as you saw by its ability to achieve near perfect uh, uh, concentricity by, turn, uh, by turning operation. However, they are not repeatable. So precise, but not repeatable. So what that means is when I took that part out and put it back in, I lost my concentricity. So how is it that something can be precise but not repeatable? Well, what's happening when this part is clamped in these jaws is the jaws are establishing an arbitrary relationship between the center axis of the spindle bearings on the lathe and the surface of this material. So uh, it can do that very precisely in that none of these parts move, there's no play or anything like that. Uh, but the point is that that relationship between this axis and this surface that is created by these jaws is an arbitrary one. So every time I remove, loosen these jaws, retighten them, 
uh, these jaws are going to end up in a slightly different place each time. Uh, once they're clamped, they stay there, but they're never going to come back to exactly the same place that they were, uh, and thus the arbitrary relationship that's created between the axis of the material, the spindle bearings of the lathe, and the surface of the material is going to change each time. So what if you need to take the part out, though, to do something and then put it back? How do you maintain your concentricity? The answer is the four jaw chuck. Now this is uh, an independent jaw chuck, which means that it has four keys and each jaw moves independently. Now the magic of that is it allows you to recreate the arbitrary jaw position that the three jaw had. So whatever orientation those jaws landed in that gave us our concentricity, we can dial these jaws into those same positions effectively and regain that exact same position of the surface relative to the axis of the spindle bearings. And we do that with an indicator. So after dialing this guy in on the four jaw chuck, you can see that we've reacquired our concentricity. Uh, so this part is now back into the same place that it was in the three jaw chuck relative to the spindle bearings. And now we can do subsequent operations on this part having maintained our concentricity. So you might ask, uh, why not just do all of our operations in the four jaw chuck then, since we can acquire uh, concentricity at will with it? And well, lots of machinists do. Uh, and you know, any machinist will say if they were trapped on a desert island with only one chuck, it would absolutely be a four jaw independent. Uh, but the truth is, for most operations uh, where you're only doing one setup in the lathe, or if concentricity doesn't matter, the three jaw uh, self centering chuck is infinitely more convenient. So, lots of things in machining are trade offs between efficiency and precision, and this is a great example of that. But wait, there's more. There's one other way to gain and keep your concentricity, and that's with turning between centers. This is, in fact, the oldest way to turn metal, and it's still the best. So when concentricity and repeatability really, really matter, turning between centers is the way to go. So if you're building high-speed shafts or uh, clock parts or things where concentricity uh, is really, really critical, uh, turning between centers uh, is really the best of, of all worlds. So the way this works is you use a, uh, a center in your spindle and a center in your tailstock and your part or your mandrel is center drilled and it's driven with a dog of some sort because of course uh, when it's held in, uh, between centers like this uh, there would be nothing to actually turn the part. Uh, there's nothing gripping it at this end. So the lathe dog allows us to drive that part and you might have a, a lathe uh, drive plate or you might have a face plate or anything that can drive this arm. Uh, and the nice thing about turning between centers is that you can flip this part end for end, you can take it out and put it back in and your concentricity will always be maintained. And that's because the only references between the part and the machine are these two points. And of course, two points always form a straight line. So no matter what we do, uh, we can always put this part back in and it will land in very precisely the same place every time. When precision really matters, it's quite magical. So to review, three jaw chuck, convenient, precise, not repeatable. Four jaw chuck, less convenient, precise, and very repeatable and turning between centers, magical. So this has been Concentricity in a nutshell. I hope you found this content useful. Uh, please do subscribe to me on Patreon where I post exclusive videos and 3D models and plans, engineering drawings for all my projects. Lots of cool content on there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.